we'll be talking about PRIJ and PR offset instructions. So first, I went ahead and set up a basic uh, rectangle job on my orange box. Um, whatever you're working on, you know, set up your, your robot path prior to doing this. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and set up our position registers. So we're going to go to data, and then I'm going to use PR3. So I always name it what I'm going to be applying the offset as. So offset plus X, that tells me it's going to be an offset PR, and we're applying it in the positive X direction. And then we're going to go ahead and we're going to record it. So we're not going to do shift record because that will capture the entire robot. We're just going to go into position, and we're going to type in all zeros for this. And then we want to also make sure that the representation matches how we want to apply the offset. So right now, I'm looking at my representation as Cartesian. So if I wanted to switch it to joint to move it to degrees, I would go to Repri and then choose my version. So I want to make sure that it's in Cartesian. And we're going to hit Continue. So now we're ready to start recording inside of our position register. So we'll go back to our job. And go ahead and go to Instruction. We're going to do Registers. We're going to do the first one. Go down to PRIJ. And we're going to type in our information. So the first set of three dots is going to be the position register we want to store information in. That is a three. And then the second set of dots is what specific piece of data are we wanting to record into inside of this position register. So 1 would be x, 2 is y, 3 is z, 4 is y'all, 5 is pitch, 6 is roll. So we want to enter that number in there. So we're doing x, so I'm going to go ahead and put a 1. And for this exercise, we're just going to do a constant value. So it's always going to be applied the same offset. So constant is going to be 50. So this alone does not offset all of your positions. We have to come in and hit choice and apply offset PR. Since we're using PR3 for our offsets, that's the one we want to apply to each of our positions. So you'll do this for every position that you want to offset inside of your program. So now when I go to run this, right now inside of our offset X position or the our X has nothing in it. When I go to run my PRIJ instruction, we go back to our position register. What happens is is it moves the 50 into X. So now our offset is going to be applied only in the X direction. So when I go to execute my job, all of my points are now going to be 50 millimeters forward or directly in front of my robot. If I change this value to, let's say, two, or 200, we're going to be 200 millimeters ahead of where the original top point is. So now it's up here, all the way forward, and it's actually not going to let me move to that one because it's outside of its motion limit. So if I applied negative 50, now we're going to be behind where that point is because we're going negative x. For this exercise, what we're going to do is we're going to capture that robot's actual position using a, a PR instruction. So the first thing we're going to do is inside of a program, we're going to go to instruction, and then we're going to do equals under registers, and then we're just going to do PR equals. So... Let's just choose a blank position register. So for L pause and J pause, that's what we're going to be capturing is the linear position and the joint position. I like to use my last two position registers for this. 
And I just name them what I'm going to be capturing. So I'll pause. And in this one, we'll go ahead and do J pause. So 99 and 100. So we're going to do 99 first. And then we're just going to equal it to our L pause. I'm going to do the same thing, but I'm going to use my 100, and we're going to capture the joint position of that robot. So what this does is this allows you to capture that position of the robot at any given point in time, and it just takes the position data and moves it into the position register, and the, the position register just acts as like a storage place for those positions. So I almost imagine it like a, a screenshot or a capture that you're you're doing with that with those numbers. So right now, if we go and look at the position of our robot in world, these are the numbers that we see. I'm going to go ahead and execute my line 13. And we're going to look at PR99. Notice it says recorded. Those numbers, I can put this in split screen, should be the same. So if we look at these, 732, 203, negative 150, 176, 1 1.3, negative 17. So that captures our linear positions. This is going to be the XYZ Cartesian coordinates of the robot. If we run our J pause, we look at the J pause joint position. Now we reference it in joint. And our numbers should line up for J1 through J6. Last one we're going to do is we're going to do an offset that is revolving, meaning it's going to be adding on to itself after it executes a full cycle. So this would be great for palletizing or if you're stacking up objects on top of each other or maybe you're removing an object from a stack. It's where we can have one position and it's going to offset that path or that program without having to go in and create a bunch of different points inside of that program. So we're going to use our square program from before. And I already have my offset created from my previous video where I'm just having it equal to a certain value. And we're just going to modify this. So the first thing we have to do is we have to set up a counter. So we're just going to do a basic register counter. And we'll do register 1. And we're going to equal that to itself. And then we're going to add a value of, let's say, 10. So this case, actually, we'll do 25. And that's going to be the offset value that we have for how many millimeters we're going to offset. So if my part was maybe 25 millimeters thick, then I would want to offset by 25 millimeters after I go to pick or place my object. So we have our regular counter. So every time it runs this cycle, we are going to execute the shape and we increase by 25. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to, instead of using a constant value, we're going to set this to our register. So register 1. So in this case, now, what's going to happen is we currently have zero set up inside of this position register. And then when we go to execute that program, our first layer is going to be zero. And then our counter is going to increase. And then we're going to go back up to the top, and we're going to move that instruction into our register. And just to verify that that happened, we now have 25. So now when I go to run my pr program again, all of my points are going to be moving in the x direction by 25 millimeters. 
So the reason it's an X is because this is a one. If I move this to a three, I'm gonna have to go back in and clear this out. Now it should be moving it to the Z. So run our process should be ran once with no offset. And when I go to run this again, now we should see an offset of 25 millimeters on the table. It's going to go up by 50. So if I go back in and check my offset again, now we're at 50. Run it one more time. And it's just going to keep doubling until I get to my value that I need or to my final height. Last part of the position register instructions is we're going to take the program from the last video and now we are going to create a fully functioning program that causes it to loop and offset uh, up to three times and then it resets after we have run that program three times. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create my, my loop. So I'm going to insert some lines here. And this is going to be our start of our loop. So I'm going to go ahead and put a, a label here at the top. And then at the bottom of my program right here, I'm going to go ahead and put my jump label. So now I can get that section to loop indefinitely. And outside of loop, I'm going to reset this PR offset instruction, this PRIJ. So we'll go ahead and enter that in. PRIJ, it's going to be three. And we're going to set our Z to a constant value of zero. So the outside of loop stuff only gets ran one time. So it's going to clear it out. And then once we get inside of the loop, it's going to keep counting until we hit a certain value. So my offset is 25 millimeters, meaning my counter is going to go up by 25 each time. I want this to go up to a total of 75 millimeters. So what's going to happen is it will execute our program. It's going to count up. And then I'm going to put a conditional statement in here. And we're going to look at if register... 10 or register 1 equals 75 then we're going to jump label out so I use 999 to enter or to jump to the very very end of my programs just so I know it's the last label in the program and it's not going to get reused so label 9999 Now when I go to execute this, what will happen is it should execute our shape one whole time. Should be able to look at our register data. which were above that value. So I'm just going to go ahead and zero that out. So that's another thing we have to add in here outside of loop is the register to equal zero as well. Otherwise, it's going to get outside of that, that number, and it's just going to keep running indefinitely. So now we'll go ahead and start from the top again. And it should run a total of three times. So here's our first run. We increase our register by 25. We should see it go up. We can see it lifting off the table there. It's our second run for 50. And 
and after our, our 75, it jumps out. 